right so this one is the nullable type right so in a nullable type we define something like this where use question mark to define it as a null type now let's go to this this so value type can be further divided into a nullable value type and non nullable value type so nullable value type in which we define question mark and non nullable means in which we define direct values without using question mark so right now in this location i have two variables both are defined as a nullable type so suppose i declare another variable um byte okay so this is of non nullable type in which i assign zero value so this is a non nullable type right so example if we have an optional question mark like are you major for this user can answer yes or no user can leave it blank right so sometimes we have a three option either two options are by default yes or no that is mandatory but there is another one like i don't know or nothing you want to fill in that so in that location we want to define a null value in that so in this location we use a nullable type So in a C sharp, if we declare this as a bool, we can store true if selected is yes or false if selected is no. But if user leave this blank, so we don't have option to store the correct answer. So right now here, I show this example for For example, here I define bool. Um, I have major like here I define question. I'm showing the right line. And then bool type question equals. And in this location, I define console dot read line. So console dot read line, what it returns? It returns string type. I have to convert this string type into a bool. So in this location, we use bool dot parts to convert this string into a boolean type. And now here, I have to ask the question if. Um, is equals in this location i use comparison operator is true any message yes f no right So suppose I have another choice. This condition I put right now. I put only this one. Let's show it as an example. So this is right now the value based variable. Value type. Value type means non nullable. Now check this condition. Control F5. Before this, I put on one line break. Are you major? Right. So in this location, I have to put a value. String cannot recognize. I have to put a true or false. So yes. Right. So in this location, it show me a result that is yes. Before this one, I want to clear my string. Right now, here I type. So hot. Clear. Like clear the previous one and show me from this one. Yes. Are you major? No. Yes. Right. Otherwise, I define again. Are you major? No. 
it will take uh, not not a no, it will take a two or pause. Boolean it will take two or pause. Right, so result is no. But suppose I want to skip this one. I don't want to insert a value in this. So in this location, what can I do? I convert this as copy this and paste it. Here I convert this as a question mark. I assign null value. This right. So yes, in else part A. Question is equals to false. No, then else. Control dot right line, and in this location. I define uh, question dot has value. Show me whatever the value in this one. Right. So go F5. I define nothing. Unhandled. Right. Go in unhandled. Uh, because I define as a console dot. Line console to a line, it will take value for that. Let's see if I define a null. No, null is not accepted in case of blue. Here I have a has value like this. Is value is a that value. As value is equals to this like this. As value is equals false. How can I read null in this location? Because here I convert it as a blue type. Let's see. Delete. Delete. Mm -hmm. well, this one, we can't do this. Converted into a boolean type. Hmm. Hmm, nothing, I can define a nothing. Now, unhandled exception. For this one, I have to use another one. I have to put this statement into a try and catch block. And the idea console dot read line is to compulsory to accept this value. So one thing we have either this one, otherwise we can stop this asking this question. And here we define otherwise like now. Let's see. I am user. No. Okay. Press F11. Put a big point here. Might go to this location. Yes. Good question. So the new question is now. Right. Add it later. So it, this one is false. Right. We jump to this. False and false. 
I have not defined any value in this. So let's jump to the first part. For no value. Right. We have to skip this one. This is also parts. For a boolean to can't assign an allable value type, boolean always contain only, boolean contain only two values. That's why this one is not accepted. When I convert this in an integer type, in that location it's working, but you can't assign boolean as nullable type. Here it works. So in this location, let's see the value of this one question mark. But in a statement, we can't check this condition. Right now, I in a comment. Right. We can check only in this location. Boolean. We can assign a null value, but in a condition we can't check with the help of a has value because has value that doesn't contain a null keyword like this. Okay. One is not accepted with the has value. This statement is false. We can't assign. This is false. Yes, we can't assign this one. That is not possible. We can check only in this location. Means that Boolean variable contain a null. Uh, so I will check this one if uh, we can do this in another way. Like how we check a true, false and nothing. Null condition. So I check that one and let you know about this one. Otherwise, we can assign a, we can convert our value type into an unable type by defining a question mark like that. For this one, we can use either false, boolean, declare this. Okay, I check this one and let you know. Next one is the reference type: interfaces, class, delegates, and array. This type. These are the reference types. One uh, more I write here, like interface. So we discuss about these ones also. So reference type in which which hold 
the actual value of this reference type are stored in the heap memory. So heap memory in which information is stored in a random order. There is no fixed order information wherever it find a space it put information in that section. Whereas in a stack memory information is stored in a sequential order it follows the concept of leap or last in first out. So heap me stack memory that is much faster than that of the heap memory and in a heap memory every time this heap memory in another time we can say it's a cost. Why? Because here we have to use a disk D fragment. D fragment basically what it do? It arrange information in a sequential order. Right now all this information is stored in a random order. So when we use a disk D fragment, so what do what it do in a disk D fragment? Arrange those information in sequential order like that. So here three then next value right now we put the data for this it five twelve then seven it line up all these information in a sequence otherwise when he uh, this random information random information means wherever it find a space it arrange all that one in a randomly order right but when we use a disk D fragment disk D fragment what it do? It arrange, it line up all the disk information in a same sequence so that searching become faster. So because of this disk D fragment, when we run a disk D fragment, that will increase the cost of this one because it line up all the things in a sequence, right? So that's why here heap memory that is more costly than that of the stack memory. In a heap memory, time to time we need a maintenance, but in a stack memory, information are stored in a same order, in a stack, one after another. So that's why here searching and uh, to fetch any information that is faster. So default value of a reference type is a null. I show you an example of a string. In a string you can directly store a null value. In this one. In a string name. I can directly define a null value in that. Nullable type bridges the differences between a C sharp type and database type. So basically these nullable types are different than that of the data type. So right now. C-sharp data type. Second one we have database data type. Database data type means for example I am using SQL server or any other server. So those server has their own data types. So what is the difference in those ones? Right now in a C-sharp one we have integer. Here we have float, third, decimal, double, then we have long, we have characters, we have here string type, we have here date. These are the different data types which is available in a C sharp, right? And now we have a data type which is available in a SQL Server. So for example, in a SQL Server, I have to store the numbers. In that location, there is an integer. Then, otherwise, there is a numeric. Numeric. In that location, suppose I define six decimal. Otherwise, there is another one. Numeric. Six comma two. Six decimal places. Uh, six digits and out of which two are the decimal precision. For example, 4000 dot. So two are for the decimal precision. So it's something like this. Right? So numeric is this one. Then in that location I have to store a character type. So there is a cat. How many characters you want to store? One, two, so something like this. 
otherwise there is another one I want to show the name of a person for example that is 10 character long so we define that this right then we have rankf rankf how many characters 10 or otherwise 7 and rankf 20 character something so there you see the difference in the data type in both of these Right. In a C sharp, we have integer flow, decimal, double, long. Whereas in a SQL Server, we have an integer, numeric, numeric, six comma two, something like this. So there is a difference in both of these databases. The way of writing, the way of uh, defining, that is different in both the locations. So how Visual Studio make it compatible? When I use SQL Server in my Visual Studio, so in that location. The compatibility that one is maintained by the Visual Studio at the time automatically it create a mapping in between these two different data types. Right now I use a data type of C sharp. For example, this is an example of a C sharp. Suppose I create my program in a Pascal, Fortran, Cobol, or in any other language. So they have their own data types. The way of writing those data types is different, right? And SQL Server, Oracle Server, Excel, they have their own data types. So how it make a compatibility in between different data types c sharp data type and sql server data type so that one is all automatically done by the visual studio so those things are defined here so now label type actually bridge that gap in between the databases so that i that i tell you when we work with the sql server right when we work with the adio.net so in that location i show you the compatibility how it automatically convert these different data types into a common type so that they can work together in a collaborative form right so here for a date in this location in a sql server we have a date type in c sharp we have a date right so the way of writing is different the way of working of these data types are different so visual studio automatically map these things so that's why in that location visual studio introduces another type that is the null label type so that we can work with the different types there. So null label type. Null label type which makes create bridge. Now, conversion. So, different types of conversions are there implicit conversion and explicit conversion. So, implicit conversion is done by the compiler in which automatically it converts your data where there is no loss of information if the conversion is done. And if there is a no possibility of throwing exception during the conversion into flow. First of all, I save this. Implicit conversion, implicit conversion in which first no loss of information, right? Second, convert lower version data and higher version data. We convert lower version data type into a higher version data type. So that is the example of an implicit conversion. Third one. Example assign interior to float or otherwise to a log. So there is no conversion of our data type. There is no uh, like loss of data. And this conversion is done by compiler. So first of all here I show the example. Right click. Stop the button. And new browser.
for this location, first of all, I have the visit. Conversion means no loss of text. I declare eight k equals to hundred. Then I declare float value float x. Now in this x variable, I assign a value of k, right? And then control dot type line. Data type is that is X. Now let's see what is the result of this one. Right now I've set it as a startup project. Control S. So this location value of load data type is a hundred, right? So there is no loss of data. Compiler. In this location, what I assign? I assign integer to float data type. I assign the value of integer into a float. So I explain it that one with the help of this example. Int k, I assign 100 value to this. And here I have a float f in which I define k to this, right? So in this location, the range of float, if this is a range of float, that is more than that of the integer, right? So range of float is more than that of the integer, so it will automatically adjust the value of k in this. Whatever the value of k, that one is automatically accumulated in this f variable, right? Because the range of float is higher than the integer, right? Float maximum value and minimum value that is higher than that of the integer and the range of integer is smaller. So we can adjust a small thing into a higher one, right? So for example, like I have an example of this one. I have a small circle, right? And after that, I have a big value. And now within this balloon, I have to fit this small circle. For example, this is a small circle is a bead, right? So I have to fit this bead in a balloon, right? So in that location, I can easily put that bead within this balloon, right? So what I can do, select this one, and I can adjust this small circle within this bigger one. Because this bigger circle has a more space, it has a more capacity to adjust this small data types, right? So this is the example of an implicit conversion. Now, let's see the example of an explicit conversion. So explicit conversion, whereas we converting a flow to int, the fractional part is lost and the overflow exception may be thrown. So hence in this case, explicit conversion is required. So explicit conversion means in this location, convert small, larger data type into smaller. So we convert a larger data type into a smaller data type. Second. Chance of data loss. In this location, we can loss our data. So here, example, convert float to integer. Suppose I try to convert a float to integer. That means I convert, I want to fit big circle into a smaller one. Is that possible? No, that is not possible. So in that case, might be that smaller circle that is uh, burst out or something has happened to that, right? We can't adjust a small value into a big value into a small one, right? So in this location, we have to force for the convert. 
example of this one. So in this location I take a float P and I assign when we use a float type after at the end of that variable declaration we have to use P precision. That is a like a format to define a value for a float. Then here I define int A. In a, a I assign P. Control dot right line. I want to see the value of P. Now in this location here, automatically when I build this application, cannot implicitly convert float to int. Whereas in this example, my compiler doesn't show me any error message. I can't direct. I can directly assign k to be f variable. But in this location, it shows me this error message. An explicit conversion exists. Right. So in this location, what I have to do, I have to convert my type into integer type. So P is a float type. I have to type cast it. In this location, I convert this P to integer. Right. So what I did, I forcefully convert my float type into an integer type so that I can assign that P value into A variable because A is of integer type. And we already checked in the last classes how we can check a value of the float and an integer. Right now here, I can check the maximum and minimum value. So in this location, float dot next value. And here I put a tab sign to see the minimum value. Float dot main value. Same thing, I don't want the integer. Int dot next value plus tab int dot main value. With the help of this, can see this result now. Here I convert forcefully, forcefully I convert P to integer type, float to integer. Now I start this application, control F5. So here you see the actual value I define in this location is 67907.5644. We know that integer, in an integer we can't define decimal part, we can't define fractional part there. So in this location automatically it lost it. And this one is what? This is the range of my float, higher range and lowest range. Range of my integer, highest and lowest. Right? So the range of float is more than that of the integer. That's why here, when we use explicit conversion, there is a maximum chances of data loss. We can't get the accurate data in this location. Because what I try, I try to insert higher version to the lower version. So that is and when we assign a higher version to the lower version, so there is a maximum chances of data loss. So here this line is the explicit number. So any doubt on this one? Implicit and explicit conversion? Right? So same thing. In this location you can use either int here in this line. I use like this one. Otherwise, you can convert dot to in 32. So same thing. One way is this one. A equals to convert dot to in 16, 32, whatever. And B. So it's your choice. You want to use first one or you want to use second one. It's just a conversion. First one, I put it into this one. And now. Check this. The result is it uh, round off that value 67907. Right? But there is a data loss. So we can't get accurate data in case of explicit conversion. So type class will not throw exception if it fails, whereas convert class throw exception if it fails. I show you the examples of uh, exceptions also in which you can get a, uh, more information. Exception means so, uh, like when I run the nullable type, at the time my system show me unhandled exception. So how we handle those ones, those we discuss later on about in an exception. Now difference between the parse and try parse. So parse, last time we discussed about suppose I have to convert console.readline. Console.readline, what it do, it always gave me the 
in uh, string value. So suppose I want to get a value of string integer type or float type or double type. So what I use, I use int dot parts, float dot parts, something like that. So now here we see the difference between parts and the try parts. If a number is in a string format, you have a two options, parts or try parts. You can use these two options here. Parts throw an exception if it cannot be passed the value. Whereas try parts return bool indicate whether it is succeeded or failed. So use parts if you are sure the value will be valid. Otherwise use try parts. The example of a part is string str. So this in this location we define a value 1 to 3. I want to get a number from this one. 1 to 3. Right now this value 1 to 3 is in the string quotes. Right. So I want to fetch only number from that. So here we use int parts. Now, same thing here, it's alphanumeric value in a try part. Int result, bool is converted. Int try part. I want to get integer value from this string. So this string contains number plus uh, characters, both alphanumeric data. So here we use try part, where we know that the result is not accurate. So right now first I show an example. So here I use int dot parts. Which one? P. Now let's see the value of K. Set as a startup project. Right click. Set as startup. Let's see the value of K. So right now the value of K is 123. Now in this 123, suppose I want to insert, add a value 123. Is that working? 124. So right now I fetch integer value from this string one. Now Think out and result. Right. Now this one. String S, that is data. Thank you. 
Comparison is not possible with the help of cry parts. Okay, I change the song, stop debugging because we can't get an integer value from this. This is the alpha pneumatic. Let's see for this one. And then now this one is good. Because that is the alpha numeric value, so that's why when it's the alpha numeric value, so how it can fetch an integer from that? It combined because both of the things are combined. E G or A B C D is combined there. So right now true. Now let's see F eleven. So the value of S is one twenty three. Right? So like this way where we have a doubt, we can't convert this one. In that location we use try pass. Right? So when I use ABC, so ABC right now this is alpha numeric, and what we are trying to convert, we are trying to fetch only the integer. So that thing is not possible in that location. It gives this message, right? So suppose we don't want any exception type of thing. I put this in a command control KC, and right now I show you this one. In this location, uh, S equals here. Suppose I use int dot pass. Let's see what this control dot right line and here I use X. Right. Now here I start this control F5. In this location I got this message. Unhandled exception. Right? So suppose you want to remove that type of exception, this type of exception message, right? So in that location we use the try parse statement. Right? Say I don't want this unwanted message on my screen. I want like a clear cut message. Please enter another number if this number is not valid. So in that location, we use a try pass. So this thing is not possible with the help of int parse. So uncomment it. So try pass always return a boolean value. So first we convert that result into a boolean if that one is possible. Now after that, if this is true. So it shows me the result. Otherwise, if this one is not possible, it shows me this message rather than the exception handling message. So here, please enter other number or other value, right? So now here I change this. Now see, now I convert that value into the integer, whatever the value. So this slide is clear. Any doubt? Any doubt on this one? Right, so here I move to the next one. Boxing and unboxing. So boxing and unboxing will be another term. Boxing converts value type to a object type. Object type means reference type. That is the object type. Or to any interface type impl implement by the value type. So when the CLR box is a value type, it wraps value inside a system dot object and store it in on the manage heap. Right. So before this one, I show this first. Object type. Now in this location we see object type.
which contained value type and it also contain a reference type. Now let's see what is the value type. Can you tell me the name of the value type? And reference type. So value type that one is defined in a namespace system dot object. That is the namespace for a value type. System dot object. Otherwise I define this namespace simple. That is the namespace for object type. Value type. For value type we have a different one like uh, here I show you that one. System dot int cc system is capital dot int thirty two system dot int fifty four different bit format right so in this location value types are integer float double decimal or date and cash. These are the main value types. Character that one is defined in a system dot cash, right? So system dot date time. So different namespaces for that. Then reference type. In a reference type, we have string. For a string, namespaces system dot string. Then we have a classes. We have an interface. We have a delegate, we have arrays, those are comes inside the reference type. Right? So when we assign boxing, first of all, we discuss here about boxing. Boxing means in this location converting a value type to the object type. Object type. Object type is a collection of a value type as well as a reference type. So when we assign a lower version to the higher version, that is same like the implicit conversion, right? So that that is possible in this location. So example of this boxing is here. I assign int k to object o, and in this object o I assign k. Right? Suppose value of k is 10. That one is easily adjusted because object, object object is a collection of a different data types. Right? In an object you can store integer, in an object you can store string, in an object you can store class. Right? So object is a collection of different data types. In an object you can store a different data types value. Right? So this one. So boxing means in which I convert value type to the reference type. That that one we call as a boxing. Unboxing means in which convert object type to value type. Means I assign higher version to the lower version. That one is creating a problem. Otherwise, in that location, there is the data loss. So, unboxing is same like the explicit conversion. It is same like an explicit conversion. This one is same like a implicit conversion.
picture right now with this example. Now in this occasion, it shows me an error message here. This one is same like the implicit compiler automatically checks. It. It's the same like implicit conversion. There is no type casting required. But in this location, it asks for a type cast. Cannot com convert object to an integer type. So I have to type cast it. So in this location, I define in which type I have to convert it into an integer type. So like this. So here, it's the same. Now, I run this one, right click, set as data project, control F5. This one, 1115. OBG1, sorry, OBG1, not OBG. This one. Wait, so suppose in OBG I assign a value higher than that of the integer. Suppose I assign this value, let's see. So here it shows unhandled exception because range of the integer is 2, 1, 4, 7, something in a million. Right? So we have to define value lower than that. Otherwise, it shows unhandled exception. Right now, I remove this last three. Let's see. Let this way. Yes, that one is possible. If I increase any one of the Number again, digit, add two more digits. Let's see. Now again, unhandled exception because the range of integer is smaller than that of that. So now I have to adjust this object value. So in this location, what can I do? I use float for that, right? So suppose float along, so float is fine. Unhandled. Float can't adjust this one. So let's see. We will use long. Long, long. So in a long, I can adjust that value because the range of long is more than 15 or 16 digits. Right? So this one is about the exquisite conversion. So the concept of boxing and unboxing underlines underlies the C-sharp unified views of the type system in which a value of any type can be treated as an object. So in this example, what they want to show you that means object is the main class and from this class, rest of the classes are derived. Value type and reference type that are the part of this object. Right? So class, interface, string, delegates, array, everything that one is come out from the object class. So in an object class, you can define any value. 
So regarding boxing and unboxing, we should have a few more details like four types of method parameter value type creates a copy of a parameter pass or modification does not affect each other. Reference type, the draft keyword of a method parameter refer to the same variable that was passed into the method or any changes made to the parameter in a method will be reflected in that variable. So when a control pass back to the calling method. So here they discuss about the different method to pass method uh, values by parameter values by ref. Out parameter used when you want a method to return a more than one value. So for example, you want to return more than one value at that time we use the out parameter. So parameter array, uh, this one, parameter. Have you done the methods before this one? Like uh, how we declare a methods in a different way. Have you done parameters before? Right now I show this example. Let me look at this. This is the main method. Before this main method, I create one method like uh, public void squares int a int b. And then I use here, yeah, I have to find a square of these two numbers, otherwise. to find a square, so I use console. Square is it is eight times eight. Then the square. With the help of this, I can find square. Now, in main method, how can I call this method, square method? So in a main I define name of my class, otherwise I make it as a static. So that I don't want to be that. Now, in this location, I declare square and I pass value in this as 5. Right? And now, I run this program. Set as a startup project. Now, when I set it as a startup project, control F5. So, square of a number is 25. Wait, one more way I can do this one. Here I declare in X. In this X, I define 7 value. And I pass X variable in this. Control F5. So, that is 49. So in this location, I pass this value. Uh, now, I have to pass as show you this one with the help of this. Now, what is the value of x? That value of x is 7, right? Now, let's see where my cursor jump. F11, it jumped to the square function. This is the square function. Now, let's see the value of a is 7. So, whatever the value of x, that same value is assigned to a a variable, right? So, in this location, what I did, I define two variables. One is x. In a x, I define a value that is 7. And second one is the a. So automatically the value of x is assigned to the a. 
and now I use S11. Then this occasion is so 49. Now same thing I do with the help of another function. Public static and void. Suppose I want to swap two numbers. So and in this location I define reference of int x reference int y. In this location I use the name mark. Variable temp variable in a temp variable I define value of x, x value I define to v. I have to interchange the value of x to y, y to x, and y equals to 10. Now, in a main method, I have to call this function. First of all, I declare a variable in a equals to uh, 10 int v equals to 20. I assign this value and here I print a value of a and b. Before slap value of a is a. B Let's see after swapping so calling function. So my function name is swap. So in this location I use swap. And in this location I define reference of A and reference of B. Right? The value of A and B I pass here like this. And here copy this one and see value of the cell. After that, after that, now run this one and I don't want this one. Uh, before serving the value of A is 10 and value of B is 20. After setting value of A is 20 and value of B is 10, it interchanged that value. So in this location, what I did, I pass value by reference. Value by reference means in this location, Pass my value. In that location, I declare two variables and x value. I define 10 and int y. Now I take this example mm. public static. Y squares in this experiment and plus in A for example. Right. So value of x is this, then I pass this one. When I call my function. So in that location, they said x is stored somewhere here. The variable name is uh, in this location value is 10. This is the 10 value. So now, in this location, both x and a are pointing to the variable 10. So here, x value is 10 and value of a is also 10. Right? It creates a copy of that 
number, right? Both of them are to store in a separate location. Or in another word, I can say x is equal to 10 and a is equal to 10. So for both of them, there is a separate memory location. For this one and for this one. 10 and this. 10 for this one. So it creates copy of the value. But in a pass by reference, this value um, divided in a two value of that is ten. Second one is 20. Right. So here in this location, I create two variables AB and here is AB and here XY. Here I type public set x void slab reference. In a reference in y. This one. So this one is defined and I did this. In a main method, I called it. Because this is my main method, and within this main method, I declare two variables. In a, I define 10. In b, I'm going to in that. Like this. And then I call that function swap. Reference A, reference B. Like this. So, in this location, both A and X. A, comma, X. Both are pointing to this variable. Ten. And here. B comma Y. Both are pointing to 20. Right? So if I change any one of the variable value, A value I define 100. So this 100 value is assigned in this location. So value of x is automatically changed because a and x both are pointing to the same location. So if I change this value, so this defined. So now the value of x is this and value of a is so this is a pass by reference and pass by value. So pass by value means in which it creates a duplicate copy of. But in a pass by reference, both variables or more than one variables are pointing to the same memory location. So if I do changes in this location, automatically it change the value of all the variables. Right? So this one is clear. Any doubt? So same thing they are trying to explain in this location, which I show you with the help of an Example, i, j, i value 10 and j value is this, or in this location, i and j both are pointing to the same location. Pass by value, create a copy and reference, it create, it reflects that one, it point to the same memory location. Pass by reference, where i and j are pointing to the same memory locations, operation on one variable will affect the value of other variables, whereas in a pass by value, I and J are pointing to the different memory locations, so operation on one variable will not affect the value of another variable because both are independent variables. Both are stored in different memory locations. That's it. <coughs> so any doubt in this one? 